Okay, here's a quick sack guide to NetSports School. You can see there's a few computers uh, behind me in the classroom. There's a leader going to hopefully control and manage using the software, which we can open by double clicking on our desktop. Now, when you start this up uh, in any room, each room uh, is configured with the default settings. You'll find here that uh, a message asks you, do you want to find the, the computers in this room? As it's been pre-configured, uh, it's best just to not show this at startup, as this isn't the uh, duty a technician will perform. And click start. So you find if you go into another room, this is room 8, uh, you may have to perform that duty on the first time you run the program in that room. Uh, I'm going to choose to connect to computer room 8. If you want to, you can, uh, every time you start a lesson, you can provide details. But I like just to launch my lesson, get in there and start my demonstration. So I'm going to choose not to show that dialog at startup ever again. I just wanted to default connect to the, to the room and get going with the lesson. I'll just click OK here. And the message will uh, tell you that you can call up uh, this screen again by going into the configuration settings, which is fine for me. Now it's going to find the computers that are switched on in the room. Uh, it'll prompt you if you want to password protect the lesson, and I'm going to say I never want, wish to do this. It may be a feature you want to put in. And I'll maximize so I can see things more easily. So you can see that it's scanned the, the room here of uh, 26 computers, and it's found 12 of them are, are powered on. And it indicates the username, as you can see here, of the, the person who's logged on to any given computer. And if a username doesn't appear, um, it means the computer isn't logged on to a user, but it is powered on. Now that's easier to see when you, on the left-hand side here, click on the button to go to the thumbnail view. Um, a handy feature of the thumbnail view as well is to see more of screens if you, at the bottom of the panel, click on the auto button. It maximizes the, the amount of uh, space that uh, a thumbnail can face, but it uh, is viewable in one screen. So you can see quite easily here that some of these machines here are powered on but not logged on. If they're not going to be used during the lesson, you could easily just hold down the control key and click on these individually. And use the manage button here to power those off if they're not being used during the lesson. And they should. Um, you can confirm that you wish to power off. And you should see them disappearing from your view here. You can see them faded out. And then if you don't want them to be displayed at all, you can just easily manage your class and choose the refresh button. And you should find then that those have disappeared from your view. Again, I'll choose to auto arrange and refit the less amount of screens into my view. Now, it may often be the case that uh, during a lesson, a student uh, logs on, they may have arrived late to a lesson, and they may, uh, they could then just start appearing on your screen here. So again, you may have to choose the auto button. And if, if you find them uh, complaining they're not seeing your demonstrations and so on, uh, you can just refresh the class again, and it should pick up that uh, user who's logged on. And again, the auto arrange button will tidy things up for you so you can see them just so. Okay, let's start exploring some of the, the features here. Uh, one of the things you, you may want to do with a class is just to uh, get their attention. Uh, two ways you can do this is just by simply clicking on the lock button. And you can see in the background there on my screens I have the, the lock appearing and it's quite simple to just to unlock. Here uh, you can also blank their screens if you rather just see a black uh, screen appearing and you can unblank it. You can see a two bar at the top of their screen so uh, for help requests and so on. So you may have to go around the corner there. If you wish to turn off that two bar, you can just click here and uh, they'll see that full screen again and they won't be um, put off by the, the net support uh, school controls that appear at the top uh, if you're not using most of those features, if you're just using net support school for the basics uh, in a lesson. Let's look at the most important feature of uh, NetSports School, uh, displaying your screen to students. So we just enter the show menu, and I'm just going to, because this is a quick start, show you the, the most basic way of doing this, by clicking on the show button. 
So now you can see that the user's desktop, or the teacher's desktop, is showing on the teacher's screen. So we can open a program such as a word processor and proceed to the demonstration. And everything that you do is merged on student screens. Now how do we stop this show session, I suppose might be our next question. Just click in the bottom right corner here and you'll notice that at the moment you're showing you can suspend by double clicking or you can add annotations to your clip as well by double clicking and introducing the annotations menu you can highlight items on your screen. You may have to be a better artist than me. You can quite easily from this menu end your show as well, or suspend or pause your show. There we go, everybody's back on screen. And you can easily just restart the show again. If annotations aren't your thing and you just want to do a basic show, you can easily just double click on the button here and end or resume, resume the show if required. There we go back off again. <coughs> okay, the last and most basic thing that I'm going to show in this quick start is to um, uh, manage web settings. You can set your web access permissions. You can just click here and you can restrict all websites quite easily. Notice when uh, browsing is, is uh, attempted by a student uh, message will indicate that the browsing has been blocked on your screen. If you have browsing unrestricted on your screen, you can click on the internet button on the left hand side and you can mouse over a student and see what websites they're browsing. I always find uh, when I'm doing this kind of monitoring activity on websites and applications and so on, that if I change to the detail view, um, it's easier to scan through things. You can see who's on the web and who isn't on the web. There's uh, two ways you can um, approach uh, blocking or filtering of websites. So one is to block mo most websites but only allow one or two and I'll show you how to do that. So you can create an approved website list. So for example, you may just want to approve only the LCFE homepage. and leave that in there and also maybe the, the BLE so and put a description in there and then when you go to apply in your blocking so when they're selected you can see only the approved sites are allowed there for those users. Again, I'll just unrestrict this. The other way you can approach it is to restrict certain websites. So for example, the most common ones would be to allow everything except Facebook. So add YouTube. And then if I apply the block restricted to the students, Facebook applies the block. However, other websites such as the College VLE here are allowed in. I'll just unrestrict the websites again. 
Uh, the other thing as well, if, if you're in an environment where you only want to apply restrictions to certain users, you can just view their screen, you can use the control, click, to select just a few for whom restrictions apply. So you can see three users here are selected and I can apply some restrictions to those three users only. So in here you can see that this user is unrestricted. However, when I select another user and look at their web access, they're in the approved only listing. 